There's been so much going on in the news this week. The end of an era somehow took a back seat. After 146 years, the greatest show on earth is no more. The last performance Sunday night on Long Island in New York. The circus, a victim of declining ticket sales. The circus and its performers never failed to entertain, but times have changed and thoughts about the use of elephants and other animals took a toll on the popularity of the Ringling Brothers Circus. The New York Times called the greatest show on earth an iconic piece of Americana. And joining us for more are Erwin Urias, whose family performed with Ringling Brothers for three generations using the globe of death. <laughs> Not the trapezoid. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Olga Sanina, an acrobat and daredevil. Her and her sister also performed with Ringling Brothers and one of the greatest Ringling Best known alumni, the daredevil extraordinaire himself. Bello Knock, I am honored to have Sir, all three of you. Thank you for having us. Uh, thank honest. you. You know, I want to get to what is the future, but let's talk about uh, Ringling Brothers uh, right now because it, I would imagine watching the, the performance on Sunday night, I mean, what were your, your emotions, Bello? I flew up there and I, I watched uh, three shows that day and just had to see it to witness it, otherwise, I probably wouldn't believe it. Um, you know, some people would say it was like a funeral or a passing or it was going away. Uh, I looked at a little bit different. I looked at almost like a celebration of life. When you look at all the positive that came out of Ringling Brothers, Cir coming out of circus is a whole nother thing. Because let's you know making it clear, the circus is not going away. Ringling Brothers closed its doors after 146 years. But I looked at it as a celebration of life. Over a billion people attended Ringling Brothers just in the 50 years that the Feld family owned. Ringling Brothers, um, how many people met, dated, and started lives? How many people got opportunities and created and launched careers? Myself, theirs, your family, yes. you know, all the people over the generations. So I looked at it as a celebration of life. Olga, you were smiling when Bella w w was saying that. How, I mean, how difficult has it been for you between now and the time when Feld first announced that uh, they were going to close the circus? It's been pretty difficult, and my sister is on the blue unit that just closed the doors on Sunday, and it was difficult watching it live on Facebook, that's what I did, yeah. <laughs> and tears, of course, but it was hard to believe, like over the two months or three months that they announced, it was hard to believe that it's actually happening. Every time it's like, maybe it's not. Hey, Erwin, I, did you ever think to yourself, I mean, this should not have happened. There, there should have, Ringling Brothers should have found another way. Well, you know, I don't think, because uh, obviously not, we don't all know the circumstances that were behind it. It was a decision, obviously, that wasn't taken lightly that the Feld family made. <clears throat> you know, they, you, again, like Bello said, you know, this is something that's been going on for 146 years, 50 years of the Feld family producing an incredible show. Um, we've had, my family had, an incredible opportunity to be on there for spanning five decades. So it was, like Olga said, difficult just to see it close, the Ringling name closing down. Um, sad because it was a part of, again, Americana that was closing down, but Circus is still so much alive. So even though that that part is a little saddened, you know, we're still continuing on doing our performance. Well, let me ask you all this, and any of you could answer this question, but the, you know, what you hear is that, number one, the use of the animals became controversial, but do you think that the debate over that kind of gave short shrift to the incredible performers like yourselves and others who delighted the audience, uh, you know, who, yeah. who saw them? It wasn't all, we, you know, all about the animals anyway. Do you mind if I'll jump in real oh, quick please. and go? I think the, the, the loudest noise came from the smallest group of people that wanted to change the way any one of us thought how we could live our lives. So it was a small group of people that made a whole lot of noise and it affected. And that's a dangerous place uh, when they would false accuse. Uh, so I never worked with animals and never had animals. I had no skin in the game. I never saw any, any, not one inkling of any uh, mistreatment. In fact, it was the utmost care. So um, that really hurts that even that they get the credit for that. Um, so uh, it's, it's a tough thing because, you know, Ringling Brothers was, at one point, was everything for everybody. And now there's so many different, um, there's so many different options of entertainment that I think it, you know, th th that and the antiquated touring system. Um, what do you mean by that? 
That's a mile long train, 300 people. Two it's a town without a zip code. So two different shows, two single, you know, two mile long trains. Uh, touring, the wagons, the trunks that go with it, and plus the large semis. Any big touring concert out there, big touring show, might be 18 to 24 semis. Ringling Brothers had 18 semis on the road, 30 RV trailers, the mile-long train, plus the flights, plus the, I mean, it's, it just was so big, they had to outdo each other that, every year. That's what I want to get to in terms of how the circus will evolve and what it has to change in order for circuses to be successful. We are just getting started and we'll pick up our discussion right after we get a check on the weather, so stay with us. We would like you to join us now in a tradition we have at Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey in the song, Old Lang Syne. So everybody sing along, please. Should An emotional farewell to the greatest show on earth. Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus gave its final performance on Sunday. Of course, we know the circus has deep ties to the Suncoast, and tonight we are joined by three of its alumnus Globe of Death stunt performer Edwin Urias, acrobat and daredevil Ogur Cernina, and the daredevil extraordinaire himself, Bello Knock. I, I would imagine just that scene probably knocks the three of you off, off the edge. Sure. It does, for sure, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, again, uh, part of history just kind of uh, closed its chapter right there. You know, we, we were talking before the show. Um, I mean, I first saw the, the, the circus uh, probably early in the 1970s at Madison Square Garden. I took my kids to see the circus for the first time, I believe, in Bridgeport or New Haven. Uh -huh. And when you mention names, the building pops yeah, into your as head. As soon as you say a town, we equate that with, oh, I know that arena, or what the shopping was, what the living was, how parking to get lot. there, the parking <laughs> lot, how cool it was, but we know those arenas. So when you say in the, you say in the 70s, his father was the man who brought uh, the globe to, well, your great-grandfather was brought, the, one of the innovators, oh, innovators, innovators of it. And then Ringling Brothers and his father, brought, they brought his father to America with the first uh, Globe of Death. And the older, I would imagine, I mean, when, when, was, when did you first start performing with the show? I actually, I was in my 20s <laughs> already, so I started from sports. And I joined the circus in 97. And then oh. what brought me to America, and I met the Urias family, and I became a daredevil. So imagine so that. And this is part of ours. Yeah, our, our part of it. Looking at all the pictures and programs <laughs> back, and then I actually got to perform on Ringling Brothers. So that's an amazing yeah. and, and opportunity. Imagine, you know, if I say something like New Haven, where I used to work, um, they had the Coliseum there, and I bet you all know it's no longer there. That's Correct. right. That's right. And, and then say, and I, I, you could go from town to town oh, yeah. with the same kind and of story. So many cities across the U.S. I mean, not only just over, you know, around the world, but so many cities, again, just across the U.S. That at one point or another, you know, you have a vivid memory of, like Bella and Nova said, you know, the building, the parking lot, certain say, things. Not only for us, because the the arena became home for us for that week. Almost every town, Ringling Brothers would stay in town for about one week. Some of the big towns, two or three weeks. New York City, six weeks. Yeah. Um, a concert or a sporting event might last a couple of hours, but it doesn't change the atmosphere. When the circus came to town, it made the town come alive, but it also made the people in that arena, I mean, it just changed, every, hey, I mean, they, they'd see you every year. So it really was, you became family with, and you know, uh, with all of the people at those arenas. So you really have a great kinship. You know, I, I want to talk about you know, how, what the three of you are going to do now. And I know that you're all associated with, the, with different circuses and, and companies, but the question that I guess the industry has to answer is, can it uh, continue in terms of being a, a popular form of entertainment with a big chunk of what, you know, Ringling yeah. Brothers was known for in terms of uh, the animal acts now gone? Yeah, well, let me tell you a, a quick one. Um, I believe that Ringling was the compass or the weather vane of what other circuses followed. If they went steampunk, if they went futuristic, if they went punk rock, if they, whatever they themed their shows, the rest of the circuses around the world followed. Even if they didn't agree right away, after they saw it was a hit, they were like, hey, we gotta do that, okay? So following in that same tradition, Kenneth Feld is very famous for saying, the one thing that you can always uh, know that's coming 
is change. So things have to change. And if it's the touring system, if it's uh, how people look at circus, or no matter what it is, it's got to change. If it's got to go bigger, smaller, uh, sort of take on different demographics, go more uh, technology, less technology, go old school, new school, whatever that is, it's got to change. But the greatest thing about it, it is called the performing arts. So art is in the eye of the beholder. All right. Or what would you like to see change? What would you like to see uh, evolve? Well, um, you know, I guess uh, we all know it. I mean, the circus has always been ever-changing. It's always been evolving uh, from not only from the performances, but the performers themselves, just uh, doing new things, pushing that, that bar, that limit. Mm, I think uh, wanting to see evolved is just, um, you know, having the people come out really and experience it. They, there's so much differences. People have a certain opinion of what a circus is. Not until you don't, they don't really notice how much they're missing until they come to a show. Again, whether it's, it's Ringling Brothers, whether it's uh, a different circus, our performance is just, it's again, I mean, what Bello does, uh, you know, all of it in itself is ever changing. And we do change it up. They think, oh, we saw one circus and they said that circus is just uh, all animals. It's not. There's so many incredible performers there. So it's, like you said, art's in the eye of the beholder. The beholder needs to come out and see it. And, and enjoy it and really relish in, in all the incredible performances that are there and Absolutely. the performers themselves. I think people started to, in a way, take for granted, because it was there for so many years, they yeah. thought it would <laughs> always be there. So they might have taken for granted that it'll always be there. And, and Olga, you have a background in s athletics. Yep. All right. And it, it's always been my opinion that the, the greatest thing about sports, and, and, and you can say the same thing with Cirque, is, is that it brings people from all walks of life together. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, yes. you love to take your kids to the circus or <laughs> to the ball game. Different nationalities, right. different languages. We all learn, the kids, their kids learn different languages because so many performers come together yeah. and it's like a one big family. Big melting so, yeah, It's so diverse. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. So what do you do now? I ride in the Globe of Death. With She's our, family. She is one of the, I've the very few stunt women in the world that perform inside the Globe. And, uh, you know, we've... Uh, Olga's been a part of our performance in our family now for over 10 years now, and it's just been, it's awesome. Yeah. I think what you're asking is, oh, what know. do performers do now that Ringling closed? But Ringling was just a major brand. It was the biggest circus, known circus out there in America. There are still many circuses out there, some with animals, some without, some that skew in different uh, themes. Um, Feld Entertainment is a very big company. Yes. I'm sure they will replace, uh, you know, and try to find jobs for a lot of their artists and entertainers or workers and stuff like that. But a lot of the entertainers came here on a two-year contract that might have lasted four or 12 or 17 years. Some, you know what I mean? Some people went there on an initial two-year contract and stayed for a lot of years. My parents came to America in 1954. Two different countries. They met, had, you know, uh, a family. And then so many years later, I'm the youngest of four boys, and I got to uh, entertain there and have a show called Bellobration. So it was really cool how it really spawned off. And now where do we go? Well, this summer I'm going to be doing a show called Incredibello here at the Ringling Museum that's right. presented by uh, Feld Entertainment and the Ringling Museum. And, and, and sometimes what is old is new again. And I'm wondering if you all think that at some point they will resurrect Ringling Brother, the, the greatest show on earth. Well, or that, is, I guess that, that possibility is out there. I mean, you know, it, Bell. I think Bell it's everyone's came, hope, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah well, you know, I mean, you have that, that, that small inclining, but I mean, you know, Feld Entertainment really for 50 years made it so huge and so fantastic. There are not, just because Ringling closed, like Bello said, it doesn't mean that the entertainment is done. Right. Uh, all these performers but, that he mentioned also, too, that are here. Or we'll continue performing in other shows around right. the world. Let's take a quick break, and when we <laughs> return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests. After 146 years, the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus has come to an end, but the show, as they say, must go on. What does the future hold for the circus arts? Our guests join us right now for final thoughts. Or what would you like people to take away from this conversation? Uh, go out, see a circus. Just because Ringling uh, is not going to be around doesn't mean that all circuses are, are gone. Go out and see an incredible live performance. See a show that's uh, locally. Roots are going to be always here in Sarasota. The, Sarasota will be the epicenter for circus as, at all times. My roots are here. 
uh, even though I came from another country, definitely go out and see an incredible show. Enjoy it. Take your kids because it'll be memories that you'll never forget. Olga, tell us one thing about Ringling Brothers that people may not know. It's always been a family within, in, oh, wow. inside. It's been a big family, and we're always going to be connected. So the Feld family is there. They probably personally know each and every one of us. Yeah. So that's incredible in itself, and it's a huge there was two big shows that they were running. So, and, and Bella, I I would imagine that you know you you hear about uh, a franchise like Barnum and Bailey, uh, Ringling Brothers uh, closing up shop, and you you must think that the the entire corporation is in in, in trouble. But but you say that that's not I the case imagine. with Feld. This is no. like any corporation where a product line is not working. Yeah, I think you, that's a pretty good way of putting it. They probably just discontinued that product line. They have a lot of other brands, I think 22, 24 other shows just in their repertoire of what they do. Monster Jams, Disney on Ice, Marvel Universe, I mean they have some and, and they do them all and they do them all very well and even with Ringling Brothers they outdid themselves every year for 50 years. They took a closed brand that had problems and they brought it back. And just quickly reassure us that uh, that Sarasota and the Suncoast will remain almost like the 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 Harvard it, it University. Let me tell of you, the, circus Cir world. the the atmosphere of circus will never go away. A lot of it because of John Ringling, the Felds, and Ringling Brothers in a whole inspired so many people. I got to tell you, even modern day, that di that daredevilish diverging diamond on University, just that a lot of alliteration and giving it yeah. a name was sparked by Ringling Brothers. Right, I think it inspired you. many thank people. Thank you all for being here thank tonight. You for having I, me. I, I, we are honored. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, Please go see a circus yeah. and uh, yeah, support. Definitely. Right. Erin Urias is uh, the third generation globe of death stunt performer. Olga Cernina is an acrobat and daredevil. And Bella Nock is, of course, the world's greatest <laughs> daredevil.